Hi, John McPhail here from Matex Control Chemical in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I want to talk to you about one of our products, RDO 302ES, which is environmentally safe, vegetable oil-based rock drill lubricant, manufactured for lubricating downhole hammers. If we look at this little video here, you can see the time lapse. You can see the oil, if you can see it on this camera, you can see the oil climbing up this rusted piece of steel. And what that is showing is the actual polarity of the product. This was over the weekend. I don't know if you can see that clock here or not, but we fast forwarded that clock just so you could see the timing of it. It was over, over the weekend. It was about two and three quarters, maybe three inches that it's gone up there. But what this oil will do to this rust eventually, it will peel all that rust off. And especially if there's any water going by it, such as if you're injecting it down into your hammer and the rust was on the uh, inside of your hammer or it was on anything, it would eventually peel all that rust off. So also if you had a, a hammer or an old tricone or something around with, that was seized up, throw that oil in there over the weekend and it's a pretty good chance that it will get in there and pick that rust away and it can loosen up for you and maybe get your hammer or, or an old tricone or something back working again. Um, in this video here, I'm just going to show Derek is putting the rock drill oil onto this pipe, but just what I want you to really note is he puts it on the pipe and then how quick that he gets to pressure washing it off. He didn't even give it a chance to penetrate into the, into the pipe or the rust that might be on this pipe, which the product will do, but in its credit, he puts it on there and then he gets this hot steamer going and he washes it off. And I'm gonna let you watch this for one, for one second. This is a three minute video and I'll come back. Hello and welcome back. My name is Derek McBattery, technical sales here at Maytex Control Chemical. In this demonstration, we're going to be showing how well our rock drill oil sticks to steel. We'll be using RDO 302ES and applying it to this drill pipe. Although the RDO 302ES is environmentally safe, we want to avoid spills as they can create other hazards such as trips and slips. Now I'll pressure wash this for a full five minutes using an industrial strength, high pressure, high temperature pressure washer. As the pipe dries, you'll see the area where the rock drill oil has been applied and where it hasn't and where it's begun coating the drill pipe with a protective coating in excess of 100,000 PSI. And you can still feel the lubricity as opposed to the rusty pipe. I've personally used this rock drill oil on my drilling equipment since 1989 and seen 40-60% to 60 increase in the life of the hammer and a dramatic increase in the rate of penetration over the life of the hammer. This is an awesome product and this concludes our demonstration. Thank you very much for watching and check back for more videos. So one thing I wanted to note was, uh, again, Derek just poured the oil on there and right away went to, to steam cleaning it with a very high pressure and a very hot, hot uh, temperature coming out. And the oil, you'd see where the line was on there and the oil was still on there. The longer that oil stays on there, 
the deeper it's going to penetrate into the, into the steel itself. And then what would happen if he had left that on there for a few days, let it penetrate in there and come steam clean it off, you'd probably see a very clean steel there because the lubricant would, uh, would clean it off. Um, this picture here is just showing uh, some of the largest hammer manufacturers in the world. This is a 30 inch single cylinder hammer uh, using RDO 302ES. This is I believe in Finland and this is over in Slovenia somewhere where it's an Atlas Copco 5 foot diameter cluster hammer. Uh, you can see that uh, the oil is being used there and this is especially if anybody's renting their hammers out because they know they can protect the inside of their hammers no matter what they're putting in their acidic water or salt water or what have you. We can protect it with RDO 302ES. Um, it's hard to protect the outside but we know that we can protect the inside or, or anybody that's renting the hammers can protect the inside by using this lubricant. Here we're showing where the lubricant is being injected, we're showing it in green because it's environmentally safe. But the point that we want to get to here is you can see your piston going up and down here in your case there. You know that the friction that's being built there between the OD of the piston and the ID of the case, that tolerance is very, very slim, very thin. If we can keep a good lubricant in there and keep that piston cooled and lubricated, we're going to continue to maintain the back pressure in this hammer which puts energy to the bit Consist, consistently drives your bit into the formation and continues to pick up your, to maintain your penetration rates. Also, uh, we have heard from numerous customers that their chucks are not wearing out near as much because of the lubricant that's being put on the splines and the chucks and the bits themselves. They're noticing an increase in, in, the, in those products. This is an interesting uh, story. I had sold 14 uh, four inch hammers uh, about 18, 20 years ago. This was back when it was TRW Mission. And eight, uh, SD4HD at that time was the, only the case was the large part. The top sub and the driver sub wasn't uh, on the heavy duty side, only the case was. Today the heavy duties go down the driver sub and up to the, through the top sub. So anyways, 14 of these hammers were sold on a dam site down at the Old Man River Dam in southern Alberta. Two and a half years later when the job was all over, I went down and picked up a bunch of scrap, uh, scrap metal on pallets, etc. This is one of the hammers, two of the hammers actually, that of seven that were brought off that pallet. When I brought them back to the shop, I'd asked the boys to take them apart and see what they were because I wasn't sure what they were. They didn't look like anything that I had sold. Lo and behold, we pulled out these pistons, pulled out the internal parts and there's your piston and this was from a camera that was taken 18 or 20 years ago. And look how shiny and clean the inside of that hammer was after two years of operating and the OD of the hammer looking like this. So, so what has happened is from the drilling, you can see the OD of the hammer, how it wore down to make it look like this with the internal parts still like this. I had the boys mic the OD of these hammers and measure the inside of the hammer case and it was still within manufacturer's specifications. All these internal parts went on the shelf from seven hammers and the rest of the, the external parts were thrown in the garbage. What a testament to this product. That's 18 to 20 years ago. Uh, speaking of testaments to the product, here's a testament from Eastern Drillers and this is going back to 1994 from Mr. Martel. He's saying here that uh, basically that Eastern Drillers has no warranty objections to the use of Matex RDO 302 ES and its downhole hammers. Um, he hopes that people get more aware of it for the potential environmental contamination and that they use this type of a safe product. So this is uh, very satisfying because when Bob started first making this oil, um, warranty was always a huge issue and a huge question, but uh, it became quite evident uh, even before that because here's a, a one in 1991 from Digger Tools that uh, this gentleman goes on to say he was using um, RC hammers with large air uh, using foam injection and was going through a lot of hammers because the foam was taking the oil off the hammers and uh, not lubricating them properly. So he started to use Bob's oil, RDO 302ES, lubricated his hammers and the foam will not wash off the RDO 302ES. That's one of, if we ever have a complaint about the product, it's because they cannot wash it off and that's only if somebody has a leaky swivel and it spits all over the 
over the derrick of the drill rig and the dust starts to stick or what have you, or gets on the floor of the drill rig and, and whatnot, it becomes very, very slippery. But uh, that's the only complaint that we have. However, if that's the problem, change your swivel, put the oil where it should be, and you'll be satisfied with the results. Here is a uh, testament or a case study from um, Santiago, Chile, or down in a mine down in Chile, uh, where we're using conventional oil and up against Matex RDO 302ES. So, to the life of this hammer was 6,300 meters, so therefore we stopped this test at that just for these results. This hammer continued on after that, however, what we really, really noticed before we got to the increase of the life of the hammer, because we stopped this test there for these results, but RDO 302ES became 3.82 meters per hour faster for the duration, the whole life of the hammer. So it saved 23.25 hours to get to the same meterage, which basically equates to five shifts. So just on penetration rates alone, again, if we can keep those tolerances there, we're going to keep our penetration there. So if we can, if it's 23.25 hours, if, if your rig rate was a couple hundred dollars an hour, there's your first $5,000 in savings, let alone the savings of, of, the, uh, of the oil and and the increase of the of the hammers. So here's a, a letter that also came with this uh, in Spanish that had been translated to English and that hammer continued on another 40 percent. So a 40 percent increase in the life over and above the penetration rate. Penetration rate is obviously, <laughs> it was, as he says right here in the bottom line, the penetration rate is a major factor in the daily production. It's a huge factor in the daily production. So what we're saying here is if we had say 28, 29 meters per hour, then the blue being the Matex oil in this line, all of a sudden right out of the, get, right out of the gate when you divided back, we were faster all the way across right to where, the, where this hammer here finished. So we're out of the gate, here's his penetration rate at first. As the, the piston OD and the case ID start to wear down, off comes your performance because your, your pressures and your hammers have, have dropped and your performance have dropped drastically to the point where you know what, you got to pull that out of there and put a new hammer on because your penetration rate is going to kill you. So we put a new hammer on here and we change the, uh, the OD, so we change the outer case or the econo kit if you will and continued right on and we can continue on probably to the life of another brand new hammer for half price basically if you do the math. Then we can get into some technical data comparisons. Um, again, this is a vegetable oil, so when you start to look at, some people ask, and, and I'm putting up this up here because lots of people ask me about viscosity. Well, John, the viscosity is not very big in the, in the, very high in your oils. And I said, well, no, it doesn't need to be high because uh, any vegetable oil is going to be a maximum viscosity of 46. So, so when you come across, that's at 40 degrees. And then when you get up into 100 degrees, um, we drop down to 8.9, but the, the thing of it is, where th this math makes a huge difference is your viscosity index. And so if you go across here, you can see where we're holding very, very strong here. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's much greater than 230. And um, so basically what, what that means is when your compressor, when the product is being introduced into uh, the drill pipe and the heat of the compressor, you're not going to have such a decline in your viscosity. You're going to be maintaining, if it was on a chart, it would be more like this versus the rest of them being like this. So your area where you want to concentrate in, there's, there's, there's very little change in the viscosity. And that's your viscosity index, and that's what you're looking for. Pour point, we're at uh, minus 35 for the pour point. Flash point, we're getting up there quite high at uh, greater than 279. Not 100% sure what it is, but we know that it's greater than that. And we're comparing against some of the petroleum products here. Uh, this is a very interesting one, the uh, Timken bearing load, it's 35 kg, and this is just basically a, a, uh, a measurement of weight over time that's put, pushed down onto a bearing that's covered with a lubricant. So the film of lubricant is on there is what it can stand, uh, how much weight it can stand over a certain amount of time. And here's your results, here it's showing 35 kgs versus maybe some, uh, some other petroleum products. Then we have a Phallux uh, EP test, and that's another friction bearing load, ball bearing load type of test that's done. 
you can check out any of these tests on Google, just type in these names and, and you can pull it up and there's lots of reading, lots of information on there and whatnot, but uh, some of them don't list here. See Chevron lists because uh, they feel it's an, an important number to put on there. Uh, here's where we fall in, so it shows that this product is very, very strong. It has a very strong film strength and it's very hard to get off and again, very hard to wash off. And then coming down to the biodegradability, of course, I mean, you're, you're, we're talking some petroleum products here versus uh, a biodegradable, uh, environmentally safe a vegetable oil product. Some of the mines in, down in, uh, in, La, in Nevada uh, will actually have huge tanks on their site. They have the lube truck and this is Maytex environmentally safe rock drill oil that's delivered in tankers to them and that's how much they believe in it for their production blast oil drills. Uh, so it works very well. It's very difficult obviously to ship internationally like this, but this is just to demonstrate um, some of the, uh, the usage of some of our customers. This is a great little video that I like to show because this right here is RDO 302 es That's a rock drill oil, the vegetable oil product. This, this fish is eating this product. These fish are still here today. This is about two years ago that we did this uh, video. They're still here today. They love the product. We can feed them that product anytime. So what we're saying here is if you're drilling around a, uh, if you're drilling around a, uh, in an ocean or a lake or what have you, and you're, you're putting caissons in and then the, some of the air and the lubricants leaking out into the water, don't worry about it. It's not a problem whatsoever because these fish can handle the, the product. As a matter of fact, they might be looking for more. They really enjoy it. To see more of our uh, environmentally safe lubricants and products, by all means, visit our web website at maytech cccom Thank you for watching.